The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The first reading is from the second book of Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, 10 sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, when this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to, my servant, sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look at and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots, and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored for you and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Parfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 30. We'll read responsibly by half verses. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up. O Lord my God, I cried out to you. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye. Weeping may spend the night. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. Then you hid your face. I cried to you, O Lord. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my Lord. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. 
The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time, if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand? It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and sing together. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, 
your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide. For the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Hear the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a house and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe out in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the de demons submit to us. He said to them, I watch Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I've given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. While the band is sitting down, aloha. That's what we say in Hawaii. And aloha could mean God, if you really think about it. And God is always the reason we're gathered together. Aloha. And uh, I also want to say mahalo, which is thank you in Hawaiian. Mahalo. And uh, that's for being here tonight and for being here the many Sundays I was away and doing the work that God sent you out to do. And that's what the story tonight is about. It's about God sending people out. And in the case of the gospel reading, Jesus sends 70 out. Now, I want you to think about the idea that Jesus had a whole lot of people around him. And he says, okay, I'm going to send some of you out. A bunch of you. Whoever wants to go, raise your hand. And someone will ask the question, well, what are we going to be doing, Lord? And he said, well, you're just going to be going out. Going out. You're going to be talking to people. We're, you know, meeting with them. Maybe helping them. There are going to be some ways in which God is going to present things for you to do. But, but you're not going to get to take anything with you. No sandals, no shirt, you know, all these things that are, you think are necessary, you can't take with you. And you can see a lot of them are fidgeting right now. If you picture it, they're fidgeting and they go, oh, well, call me next week, Lord, you know, or, or maybe the next mission, you know, they're, they're, surely there's one that's more suited for me. Yet 70 said yes, they went out. And when they went out, extraordinary things happened. Extraordinary things to the point that they were all giddy when they came back. And I want you to know that God has sent me out. That's what the story's about. God sent me out, right? And great things happened while I was out, and great things happened here while I was away. And for that, I give thanks, mahalo. There's another story here in the Old Testament about ascending out, too, and that uh, there is a great king, a great uh, uh, general in the Aram, and he uh, is named Naaman, and he's favored by the king. And he's got leprosy. And they've captured this Israelite woman, and she's a servant. And she says to her mistress, she says, uh, you know, uh, there's a prophet in the land of Israel where I come from, and he can heal your husband. So she's able to whisper to her husband, you need to seek this prophet out in Israel. And he listens. Now, a lot of those people that Jesus spoke to didn't listen, and sometimes preachers think he, they're having a hard time communicating. There's words being spoken, but does everybody listen, right? And, and you hopefully the, the message is you've got a speaker and you've got some receptors that are hearing the word. Oftentimes, these people, about Elisha and, and Jesus, they didn't have loudspeakers. So when they had to get somebody's attention that was sleeping or playing with their telephone or reading a book or whatever while he's talking, they had to talk a lot louder to get their attention. Y'all probably missed that, hadn't you? I heard that by the van is real quiet. But, but anyway, I won't talk loud all night tonight, but 
In these stories tonight that we read, Jesus has convinced 70 people to go out and by the voice of a young Israelite girl, Naaman leaves his town and goes to the king and says, I've got to go to Israel. There's a king there. There's a great uh, prophet there. And, and the king writes a letter to the king of Israel. When he gets there and presents the letter to the king of Israel, he goes nutso. He's ripping his clothes apart and saying, oh, this is a plot. They're going to get after me because I can't heal this person. And the young girl says again, no, 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 no. It's not about you. It's about God's prophet. He's the one. I know where he is. I can find him. And so the king listened because he didn't want to pick a fight with the king of Aram and, and uh, Naaman listened. So once again somebody heard the voice and listened and they followed out. Great things happened. Naaman went to uh, Elisha thinking that he's a powerful man. He's got uh, lots of things with him that the king provided him, and he's going to be impressive to this great prophet. And he gets there with all of his credentials. And you know, credentials are important, right? You know that, don't you? The whole time I was in Hawaii, I, I, or most of the time, I wore clothes that I got at the thrift store, right? And uh, I bought all my clothes at the thrift store. When I left, Trudy said, you don't have enough clothes. I said, no, I'm going to buy all my clothes at the thrift store because I wanted to look like I was homeless. And I was mostly homeless. I lived in a little bitty dwelling on the parking lot of St. Elizabeth's Episcopal Church in the epicenter of homelessness in all of Hawaii. And I would walk around, and they would think that I was one of them. And one day I told Trudy... I had been to the city and I had been to a council meeting and I wore my collar so I could be impressive like Naaman, you know. And, and, and sure enough, I got there with my collar on and all of a sudden people were very cordial to me. People that hadn't even spoken to me hardly before were looking at me differently. And I thought, well, this collar is a pretty good thing, you know. It's, but I told her, I said, I have to take the collar off when I go out on the street. And she said, no, no, leave it on. It'll be good. I said, no, no, because what will happen is if I wear the collar, then people will expect something from me. And I wanted these people to know that I had nothing to give them and I didn't want anything from them except this idea of peace be with you and the kingdom of God has come near. And that's what Jesus said. He said, go, you go. And if they greet you, if they're nice, you Peace be with you. And you tell them the kingdom of God has come near. And some of these people have been on the streets for years, right? And all they needed was someone to come and say, Hello, aloha. How are you? My name is Steve. Charlie, some of you read my blogs, and so you know about Charlie. Charlie was a sexton of the church there at St. Elizabeth. And Charlie was quite the character, 49 years old. He'd been on the street for three or four years when he first got there. He was 16 when he got there. And he lived there on the street until he got a girlfriend, and then he and his girlfriend formed a life together, and then she died, and he was back on the street again. He got another girlfriend, got married, had children, and then one disaster after another. And Charlie has this little bitty apartment, 100 square foot, with two children and a dog living right across the street from the church. And if Charlie had not have been there, my time there would have been much harder. Charlie was a gift from God. He became my surrogate son while I was there, and his children my surrogate grandchildren. And I suppose, and their little dog too, you know, Toto, he was my surrogate dog. And, and I spent a lot of time with Charlie and his kids, and I'd take them places, take them to lunch and dinner and and uh, would listen to Charlie and his stories and he had many stories and uh, Charlie told me about making all this money and he lived in a hundred square foot house, apartment that he paid 640 a month for and he had made all this money and I thought what happened to his money and Charlie one day was telling me uh, a story and he, he said I've done something really really bad Father Steve I said, what? What, Charlie? This was toward the end of my time there. I said, what have you done? He says, I borrowed money from payday loans. 
I helped Charlie out a lot while I was there. And, and uh, it was toward the end of my trip, and I, I heard him tell, say payday loans, and I remembered I'd been through that experience with someone else, and I thought, you know, you don't just don't go to payday loans. He said, now I owe $200 more than I started owing them two weeks ago, and they're squeezing me. They're coming, they're, they're going to hurt me. I said, Charlie, you should have known better. He said, I know, I know. And Charlie was expecting that I would cave in here because he's very adept at the street and manipulating and getting people to buy into his schemes. And, and I listened to him for a while. I said, well, Charlie, that's tough. That's really tough. You're going to have to figure out a solution to that, aren't you? And he knew the ATM was closed. He thought, oh, the bank is closed. And then his kids came up, and his kids had already spilled the beans that there was this plan afoot, and Charlie began to explain the plan to me. Well, I'm going to come to Alabama, and I'm going to pick up my other two kids, because he has two other kids, two older kids that live in Mississippi, and I'm going to bring them to Alabama, and you're going to help us reunite. I want you to help us reunite. And I'd heard this story already several places, and I'm listening to it. It's great curiosity because I wonder how I'm supposed to do this, right? And, and then he, his daughter chimes in and says, and what about our little dog too? You know, Toto, our little, your little dog too. And uh, I, the dog's name was something else, Pupster, I think. And the Pupster wanted to go too. And, and, I, and I looked at Charlie after a while and I said, Charlie, Charlie, if you're going to be scheming and getting me involved, you need to spread the joy. Get Father David to keep the dog, Right? And then I got serious with Charlie, and I said, Charlie, I'm going to tell you something. Your daughters don't know me. I'm nobody to them. And, and you have all ne things necessary to make this work. And it's not going to be about your street sense, your ability to make things happen by manipulation and control and scheming. Right? You can make this happen if you trust in God. And if you trust the love that you have for these girls and for other people. Because he's a very loving guy. And he heard me. He listened. There's a prophet in Israel. And he'll take care of things for you. Well, when Naaman got the, to Elisha, Elisha didn't come out. He just talked to one of his minions and said, go out. Tell the, tell the general he can go to the Jordan River and bathed seven times. He'll be okay after that. And Naaman was mad. He wanted to leave. He was going to just throw the towel in, you know, because it didn't work the way he wanted it to do. And Charlie could have easily done that that day. He could have said, well, I wanted you to pay for this. I wanted you to bail me out here, and now you're letting me down. All of our time together, our bonding. But Charlie didn't. He listened. He heard me. He said, I'll figure this out. And you're right about my daughter's. And this little voice, this young woman, says once again to Naaman, 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 wait. Don't you think if he gave you a hard task, you would do it? Why don't you just go try it? Go out there to the Jordan and see what happens. And when he does, he gets healed. Great things happen. All of our scheming is for naught. I was with a group of seminarians, and I was a teacher. They had been all weekend long for the seminary experience, and they're going four years, but only on weekends, right? Not every weekend even. I'm thinking, well, they're not getting the same rigorous uh, teaching that I got. I'm going to give them some teaching. So I wrote a paper. Some of you read the paper. I put it in my blog, and, and it was really good. It was one of the best things I ever did, I, if I must say so myself. And it was very challenging academically, and I was going to give it to them at the end of a little spiel. And because I knew I only had a few minutes. But the two presentations before me were so rich about homelessness, which was the topic of the day, and I thought, I don't know anything about homelessness. All I know about is walking around the streets saying, hey, hello, aloha. My name is Steve. What's yours? And I thought, oh, I better get quick here. I better write something. So I was listening, and one of the teachers was a Chinese priest. You met some Chinese priests, I suppose. And, and uh, the Chinese priest said, real emotionally, he said, the problem with these people is they need to learn to save. We learned to save in China early on. If they just saved, they would have plenty. And they'd be able to afford housing. 
And he was convinced of his argument, as many people are convinced of all sorts of things about the homeless. And if I knew anything about the homeless, I knew that homelessness has lots of reasons. There's lots of reasons for homelessness. And I listened and I wrote down Chinese savings. And when it got my turn, I only had a few minutes. I said, well, I'm not going to tell you, talk to you about the homeless. These people know all about the homeless. I want to tell you about something else. I started talking about something. And I said, let me tell you something. No matter how much you save, it may not be enough. You could get wiped out in a minute and you would be just in the same boat that they're in. Those people, them, right? And I began to build on that. And then I told this story. I met a woman on the street, and this woman was about 70 years old, and she had a son, and the son, and she shared an apartment. And then the son got married, and he left to be with his new bride. And then the woman didn't want to disturb their marriage. They moved to the mainland. She was going to stay in Hawaii and live her life, and she had savings. She could do it. And then one disaster after another, and she was on the street. That's going to happen to you too, by the way. Your son's going to get married. Oh, you're, you're going to, it's going to happen to y'all. Your son's going to get married, then the disasters happen. You're going to be on the street. But I'll come visit with you. <laughs> and then June and Aaron will be fine. They'll be living the rich life. God sends us out. And great things happen. As I told Charlie, and I'll tell you tonight, the only thing that we can depend on is Jesus Christ. That's the only thing. That if we put our trust there, great things can happen. Naaman, in order for his healing to begin, had to let go of control. I know we've done, we've done some great things since I was gone. I noticed the new building. Have y'all seen it? It's beautiful. It's really gorgeous. Go look at it after the service. It's, You've seen it? Anybody seen it here? No, but you've got to go see it. It's wonderful. And we've done that. All of us have done that We're together. People chipping in, one minion after another, one of God's minions had chipped in, and we made this happen. Great things are possible. But in order for them to happen, we have to let go. During the whole process, there was always somebody carping that had a better idea. I, I, I just, no, you got to listen to me. Listen to me. No, my, my idea. That, listen to me. I can tell you how to do this. If you want salvation, you got to let go of all that. And that's one of the features of homelessness. It's difficult to let go. I saw lots of people with lots of stuff piled to the top of their grocery cart. What would happen if you said, I need a spoon? And they said, oh, I've got one down here. They had to take everything off to get you the spoon to put everything back in again. But they can't let go of any of it. You wouldn't get the spoon because it's too valuable. We've got to let go. One day, Charlie took me on a trip, and, and he had some time, and I had some time. And I said, come on, Charlie, let's walk. And we walked the streets, and here's a guy that had been on the streets for three or four years. He knew the streets. He worked the streets even after he got off the streets. And we walked all the way to Waikiki, an hour and a half walk. And throughout that time, he showed me every illegal operation throughout. He said, now there's a gambling casino over there. There's prostitution ring over there. There's drugs over there. All this all along the way. And then he would point out people. He said, I know that guy there. He's been there for a long time. And when we're coming back, I see this man, and he's sitting on the street. He's sitting in the same place he always is, although they have moved him a little bit. I speak to him every day. Every time I go by him, I say, hello, good morning, aloha, you know, whatever, good evening, good afternoon. And he would look at me and smile. He never would respond. Charlie said, see that man over there? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, he's been there for 25 years. He hasn't moved from that place on the sidewalk for 25 years. I said, no, he has. He moves regularly up the street and back down the street. He said, that's only because they're moving him. The police are moving him now. But it's the same place for 25 years. He had nothing, no things. But he couldn't let go of that spot, right? 25 years. We're, we're going to celebrate our 25th anniversary here in a couple of months. And we've done, God has done great things here, right? Great things, great, great things. But there's a lot more to be done. God is still sending us out. 
Today was kind of an off Sunday with a crowd. I noticed that our numbers were down. There, I haven't got anybody sign up for confirmation class. Anybody want to go through a second time? Somebody hadn't been through, want to go? And and uh, and I thought we can't stop. We can't sit still. We can't get stuck in one place. So there is a. In order to not be homeless, we have to be able to let go. And we have to be able to go when God sent us. And we have to be able to listen so we can hear the sending when it happens. And if we do that, great things can happen. And that's good news. Now let's stand and let's say the historic creed of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and works, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are for Barack Obama, our president, Joe Biden, our vice president, Robert Bentley, our governor, and Troy Trulock, our mayor, and for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Keith Sloan, our bishop, Santosh Murray, our assistant bishop, for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. They're being back home for our building. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom especially for Walker. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Dear Lord, dear God, thank you for all the blessings of our life, and thank you for the people that you have given us. Help us to honor and grow in your love with them and with all those that come our way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, son. I'll get the back of the mic off.
under, I understand we had huge crowds here every Sunday, and then they hear I'm coming back, and now look, look what's happened. Catherine, did you tell everybody to stay away? Okay. Yeah, they just did. Okay, we're having, we're having some communication problems here. Communication problems. I need people to sign up for confirmation. So you may know a lot of people here at church. You may know a few people, but you're bound to know somebody that could probably use uh, my class because I'm really good at it. I'm a, it's a good class, and you'd like it. So come to it. And I think we've got one recruit already, we hope, and uh, for the youth class. We need more because we're building up for the 25th anniversary when the bishop comes. We want to present him with people for confirmation, baptism, all those good things. So that starts next Sunday. So if you can think of some people before then, I'll try to scare up some people the next two weeks, the next week. And uh, then remember the Tylers in your prayers. The Tylers, Wendy Tyler's son Walker died. Remember them. And lots of people have had some difficulty while we were away while I was away. We have a new building. Go look at it. It's gorgeous. It is just wonderful. It's lots of possibilities. I, I think we're going to open up McDonald's on the end, you know. And the neighbors live right there. Are new people in the community, which Catherine's going to recruit for St. Matthew's. Have you already done that? No? Oh, they haven't moved in yet. Okay. All right. And then and then the last but not least, subscribe to the Lord, the honor to his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of okay. thine own we have given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You make, made us with your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, and to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ hath taught us, we now pray.
are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with the past and the of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Trading our sorrow.
Thank you.